makes Richardson so good? Well, you know, anytime you're strong and fast, you know, you you got a chance to be a pretty good football player. And for his position, he's extremely strong. He's extremely quick and fast. So um, that's one position that uh, height is uh, overrated. How much did you see Aaron Donald? To the, would you be able to compare them at all as players? Uh, I wouldn't. I mean, I know who you're talking about, but I never really watched the video go. You saw him on the field and you're evaluating him as a player. The height would obviously scare you out. Scare you out. What did you think of him as a high school player? Well, we offered him. He's a kid who came to camp. As soon as he got done with camp, and we offered him, you know, so you just don't see a kid that big be that explosive and run the way that he does, you know. So, uh, like I say, if he was two inches taller, everybody in the country would have recruited him. So, we, with where we've been, again, our background is that, and again, everywhere we've taken kids more athletic and given up a little bit on size, you know. So, uh, his was just a height issue. Tracy, uh, with Richardson, how can he get even better? Two games yeah, and you, I mean, it's just like anything. You can't judge his worth on two games. I mean, you know, what's a blind squirrel finds an acorn every now and then, you know. And so I'm not saying he's not a good player, but he's got to do it consistently before you start comparing him to some of the other people in the room, you know. So we're, we're talking two ball games. So as a young pr player, he's got to learn how to line up and do it every snap, every game. They had a lot of rushing yards in the first quarter, and then you guys seem to really shut that down. What yeah. were the keys? That was all coaching. You know, counter we weren't ready for. So I'm just telling you the truth, we didn't work enough. Seeing the counter wasn't ready for it. You know, in the other one, we were thinking uh, play action pass, and, and they hit a seam, and uh, we had a couple of missed tackles on the one, but so those get written up to me. After I started doing things a little bit differently, it worked a little better. Were those plays of an example of where having Travis is so key? Uh, no, they still would have worked, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, we didn't have a, you know, we didn't work on counter against them, really hadn't seen, you know, that, that's what's hard about that game is just not having really any video, you know. I mean, they didn't have to run that play the week before to, to win. And, and so uh, after that, we just started doing a couple things differently, you know, so they, they did a good job of of that, and, and I didn't have our kids prepared for it. Coach, how did you feel <coughs> Kunle and Duke played, and then what was the Kunle and Duke, how did you yeah. feel like they played, and then what kind of went into that breakdown and coverage on that 47-yard touchdown to put them ahead? Well, you know, what happens is you have a breakdown in coverage, and we're a split secondary, you know, by that we got a free safety and a corner on both sides, and, and uh, Kunle, he um, he just gave, he gave the wrong coverage to Eric Murray is what he did. So we should have had another overlap player. Not that we would have stopped the pass necessarily, but we should have had somebody else there to at least get it to the ground and tackle it. So it's a miscommunication on his part. He made the wrong check off of a formation, and and it's part of being young and growing up, you know. So that that's what happened on that. Uh, you know, besides that, uh, um, those guys who hadn't played a lot before really. Uh, I'm very pleased with the way they played and the way they competed. You know, I, mean, we, I was taking a lot of experience and a, and a good player with Demarius and and uh, and uh, Charlie Rogers played awfully well uh, against TCU, and so uh, it put us in a little bit of a bind. But you know, in, in this game, you're going to have it. it. It's out of your control, and as a coach, you you get the next guy ready. And uh, I thought Coach Savell uh, did a great job of, of getting those guys ready to go, and, and um, uh, we made a couple of mistakes, but uh, what would those guys do? They made, but at the same time, you know, 95% of the plays they played, I thought they did awfully well against a good football team. Coach, coach talked about kind of what it's like for a defense to prepare against an offense with a no huddle that runs it all the time versus ones that will slow it down and speed it up. Yeah. How does that kind of change things from a preparation standpoint? You know, for us it doesn't because we, we don't huddle on defense. So, uh, you know, it's a matter of being ready for, you know, when they do change the tempo. So, you know, we practice no huddle every week and, and we don't huddle when we don't see no anyway. So th that that change of tempo is that 
Not that it couldn't get you on a play here and there, but there's nothing different we'll do preparation-wise. You, know, you always have one guy assigned on the field to, to keep an eye on the offense in case they start to hurry to the line to let everybody else know what's going on. You know, But as far as preparation goes, it wouldn't be a lot different. What are the biggest challenges Kent State brings offensively? You know, the different running game. Um, what everybody calls a pistol with the quarterback off the line. Um, about four to five yards and the tailback right behind him and and so they, they it's just it, it's just the opposite of the shotgun running game and so uh, some of the the run fits and and how does it roll in the secondary are different than the shotgun team and we haven't seen that yet this year so it'll be important that we do that and then uh, um, keep the ball in front of us on the uh, you know they throw a lot of bubbles and so then they have the fakes off the bubbles and the play action passes so We'll have to be honest and in, in, in the run run support, but at the same time, is uh, be good with our eyes and not let something get behind us on one of the the uh, play action passes. Is there one more for post plays? A couple of these MAC teams coming up. Um, how would you sort of gauge the, the skill position talent that's in that league these days? It, I mean, it seems like every year one MAC team is beating a Big Ten team. Yeah, it, it's a good conference. I mean, we came from that conference. I think that helps us. We're getting the kids prepared because you have every kid in that conference been told he ain't good enough playing the Big Ten, and then we play them all during the season. So, uh, and, and it, you know that conference spreads the spreads the field out a lot, and, uh, it, and you know they there's enough kids out there can run. You know sometimes they're different sizes and things like that, but uh, you know they all those kids at those schools want to prove that they should have had the opportunity to play at a Power Five conference, and so. Uh, you know, they play the chip on their shoulders, and, and you got to be ready to play or, or you'll be in for a long day because you, you'll see their best when you play a max school and, and you're in the Big Ten. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Coach, it sounds like a few injuries up front, offensive line. Where, does, where, do you, where are you at now in, in progress there? Always a work in progress. Um, you know, depth's going to be tested. Uh, you know, you just – you do as much as you can early in the week, get those guys back ready to go, try and do as much mental stuff with the guys that you expect back that maybe can't practice at the beginning of the week and try and get uh, as many of them healthy, get as many hands on deck as you can for Saturday. So we'll be okay by the end of the week. We just got uh, a little banged up. Guys need an extra day or so. How much do you just feel for John uh, after all he's been through another uh yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a shot to the gut. I mean, when he went out, obviously you're in the middle of the ball game and everything's going on, but then after it all dies down and you kind of find out what's going on, I mean, you feel bad any kid, any one of the, you know, 120 you have in the program when something goes, goes wrong. But for a kid like that who just keeps fighting back and uh, keeps getting punched in the face and keeps coming back, it's uh, something you, you pull a little bit harder for. So that, that, that was a little bit tough. That was a gut punch. But... Uh, He's such a great kid, you know. He came out of surgery yesterday, and I texted him, and he said, uh, "He said uh, knee scopes are a lot different than other surgery." So he was pretty happy about that. So if you could put a positive spin on that, you're a pretty positive kid. So yeah, you watch uh, Rodney Smith in camp, and he just looks different from other backs. Did you think it was just a matter of time before he would kind of elevate himself as a future guy? Yeah, you know, Chip. One of the biggest things is is that, like I talked about before, is is there's. It isn't just with the ball in his hands, you know, and that's such a huge thing with, with Rodney. Now, obviously, he's showing that he's very confident because you could have a, a bad running back who can do some of the other things. But when you start putting the whole, the whole thing together, that's, what, that's when we knew, hey, there's, there's something pretty, uh, pretty special here. And, and then combine that with the great, you know, skills that he has with the ball in his hand. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, unfortunately, he didn't grade out perfect this week. He had a few mistakes. But... Uh, you know, the increased workload and, and, and those types of things, I think that added to it a little bit. But he was pretty critical of himself and knew that there were some things that he can do better. And that's all you ask for of a kid like that. What do you, with uh, Walatarski's progression, what, what have you noticed the kind of the, the keys for him? You know, one of the things with Drew is, you know, he played as a freshman. And, and with not having a lot of the older wide receivers, he was a guy that and, – and this happens – at all positions, probably everywhere, is when you want to get things done, you take your older kids and say, hey, fit in here, play there, do this. And Drew kind of bounced around, inside receiver, outside receiver, did a lot of different things. Well, early in camp, 
we uh, started working him inside a lot more and said, hey, get really good here because we have some other guys who have come along uh, out on the edges. And uh, he was able to really work on that. And then there was more of a comfort level now of going, okay, I really feel like I have a home inside. He's a different kind of slot receiver. A lot of times you think of a, of a little shifty guy inside. But sometimes it's not a bad thing to have a guy like Drew and his body type in there. And that's one of the things that we looked at and said, you know, he may be able to do some good things for us and, and got him to where he felt really comfortable in those things and then expand it back out for him. So uh, to say it was a huge surprise what he did it isn't necessarily true. It was a very pleasant uh, pleasant circumstance that came up, to, you know, that he did what he did for sure. Matt, why, does, why do you think Lightner's uh, more comfortable and know how to play it? Um, you know, I, I don't. I don't quite know that one. You know, that one's kind of an individual thing. I think that, uh, I think if you ask Mitch, he'd say he's comfortable. You know, he's comfortable in everything. But I think what happens in the no huddle is, is that, uh, is that everything just, you know, all the way across the board. You know, what's amazing to me about no huddle is, as an offensive line coach, I watch, and we're not as clean sometimes in no huddle than we even are during, during regular, you know, huddling up and running plays but they tend to be more successful plays. And I think it's just everything kind of vanilla's up, settles in. It's kind of like what you see is what you get in no huddle, especially if you're doing it fast enough. So I think that probably helps everybody because I know the guys up front, the receivers, you know, you take it and you go to X number of plays from a, you know, a wider range that you're dealing from and kids can just go out and as with anything, you know, they can just play, you know, if, you know and I think, that's what, I think that's what it comes down to, so. You guys haven't been able to score on an opening drive since the Iowa game. Do you think that that, the slow starts affect the team's confidence and what can be done differently? Well, you know, we're aware of that and, and uh, we put a lot of time into, uh, into uh, opening series, uh, uh, opening script. The toughest thing that we run into is because we're somewhat unique from everybody else, it's hard to know from week to week. Um, you know, Colorado State, in all honesty, played us completely different than what we thought they were going to based on what they had done the week before against Savannah State and what that defensive coordinator had done previously. So there, there's kind of a settling in and, okay, here's what they're going to do to us. And I think one of the things that, uh, that Coach Kill and I constantly talk about and we work towards is getting that adjusted quicker, seeing what they're doing to us and understanding that and going, okay, this is the part of the game plan we need to go to and, and attack what they're doing to us earlier. And we're a little slow at times getting to that. Uh, just because of uh, some different things that, that a defense will do to us. So, you know, we'd love to, we'd love to go out and score on a 80-yard uh, touchdown the first play of the game, but uh, sometimes in what we're trying to get done, uh, it's a little hard to know exactly what they're going to do to you, and then once you get it, then, then you can get the guys. You know, I think that's what happened to us, especially in the second half. We were able to, to have a good feel for what's going on, make those adjustments, and move forward. And now the big key is just doing that even sooner. What stands out to you the most about Kent State's off uh, defense? Uh, you know what? They, they, uh, they do a lot of different things. Um, you know, they're not just going to be, you know, sit at home and, and, and play base defense. They get in and out of a lot of coverages. Um, they like to bring people. So one of the things you got to make sure you're doing all the time is being very sound. Uh, you know, you can't cut people loose. You can't assume anything. So that's always a challenge when, uh, when you face a team that, uh, uh, that likes to, to wheel and deal a little bit. And so uh, that's what we've been spending a lot of time on is making sure we don't take anything for granted and cut someone loose in a protection or, or uh, you know, leave someone free that can come in and make a big play and, and turn, a, you know, turn a momentum or turn a game around. Uh, which is greater, concern about the slow starts or the satisfaction that finding ways to put it together toward the back end? Well, I think that, uh, you know, you can take solace in, the, in the, the back end of it. But, you know, we want to play a complete game. You know, I, you know the, the whole thing of being able to come down and win in somewhat dramatic fashion, rather not even have that be an issue. And uh, so, you know, I think the, uh, the slow start is definitely something that, uh, that is top on our mind. And, and like I said, we put... We put a lot of time into two things, and we're not very good at them right now. Is is the start of the game and third downs, and that's something that uh, that we got to continue to uh, put a lot of emphasis on and emphasize it to the kids. And I know Coach Kill says it all the time. You know, you get what you emphasize. So that's where 
that's where now those, those you know, the, everything that those kids hear isn't the negative part of what we can't do, but hey, this is what's important to, you know, to win in the ball game. That fourth and seven game on the line and call uh, Big Waz's number, can you just, what, what goes into that and just how about the play you made? Actually, he won the primary on that, uh, which I give Mitch a ton of credit because they jumped all over the, the primary part of the route did a great job with his eyes coming back, and fortunately he saw a 6'10 uh, running there. And, you know, Nate's one of those guys that uh, he, he really, Coach Kill was talking about it Sunday after film. You know, our tight ends, even with, you know, Max's departure and the injuries that we, you know, we've had, I mean, you know, losing three, four guys, and then Brandon Lingen going out when he did in the game, and to be able to have – Nate Wozniak do such a good job, make a key play for us. Uh, Nick Hart um, comes in and, and, what was it, second and 15, and has a big catch to get us into third and manageable towards the end of the game there. And, I mean, he came within an eyelash of catching the, uh, the wheel route we threw to him. I mean, it made a great play on it, just couldn't quite secure it, and, and uh, did a good job, was aggressive blocking. So um, those guys, that's a – that's a testament to Rob Reeves because Rob's our tight ends coach. And to take a guy that was hurt in camp like Nick Hart and didn't really do a whole lot, and to get him ready to go out there and contribute in a, in, you know, in a, in a victory, I think is, uh, is pretty remarkable. And then Nate Wozniak, a guy who's just every year, he's just developed more and you see more maturity and, and uh, the ability to go there and make those types of plays when it counts is, uh, is definitely something he's primed for. Matt, uh, this is the last one. Go ahead, Dave. How, uh, how much would you like to get Gentry involved Saturday, and is there any update on uh, Jeff Jones and his readiness to play? Yeah, you know what? Uh, in all honesty, uh, we'll, get, we'll get updated on Jeff um, here pretty soon. Uh, they're doing some tests and things just to see where he's at. But getting a kid like Isaiah back, you know, he's, he's a guy that uh, – in all honesty, if he's healthy and he's right, he, he, can, he can help turn a game around. You know, he's a big play receiver, a guy that, uh, that can change that field in a hurry. And uh, we're excited to get him back. Um, you know, at times, I think you're guilty at times of pushing a kid because you want to get him back and they're not quite ready. I give Coach Kill and our training staff a lot of credit. They resisted the temptation to try and bring him back early. One to make sure that it wasn't a, hey, we have a little bit of good and then that huge setback again. So they, they waited a little extra long. So we've been kind of chomping at the bit as coaches to, uh, to get him back involved. And, and now that he's gotten the clean bill of health and is going to be out there, I'm excited to see him uh, run around do some things today. And what he does today and tomorrow and Thursday, as with any of them, gives us an idea of how involved they can be in the game plan. All right. Thanks, guys.